I want to be slapped like Chris Rock. That wasn't a slap. I mean, that was a punch. I want to be like, screw sports here for a few minutes. Let's talk about what we saw last night. Oh, that's right, baby. Uh, that's are you tuned in. You want to see me slap the shit out of Paul Burmeister? <laughs> me too, but I'm not going to do it, okay? Because I like him. And he hasn't made any dirty jokes about my wife yet. Not today. And even if he did, I'd go, ha, 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 that's funny. You haven't met her, but it's a good joke. I mean, that was amazing last night. I know we were just talking about it oh, a few minutes crazy. ago. Yeah. If you did, if you did punch slash slap I know. Me, I thought it was a punch until I rewatched it, it this morning. It sounded like a punch. It looked like a punch. But then you look at it. It's, it's just a hard it's a, open, open yeah. hand kind of thing. Either way, it was direct contact. If, if you did deliver that kind of contact yeah. to me, I hope I could continue on the way Chris rocked it. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, he just kind of wore it. It was like, whoa. Didn't change face too much. No. Kind of just... I mean, he was shocked. No, I. And, and we I thought he kept it together he, really well. I mean, as well as you can keep together. And that, I mean, you talk about a quarterback having to deal with some pressure <laughs> in the two-minute drill. I mean, holy crap! He got slapped in the face, then kept it together. And you know what's even the best part about it is because, of course, when you were watching live, they cut the sound off, right? So you were oh, like, yeah, right. I don't know what's going on. Mm. To see the clips today of the sack, yes. like he just, you know, he he his first reaction was, Will Smith just slapped the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he. Did about as good as you could do. I thought so too. And he was clearly rattled. How oh could my you gosh. not be? And and like go back and watch it a dozen yeah. times, of course. And like right when Will Smith came up there, Chris Rock was excited. He's like, oh I guess I know. I mean he's not gonna be to some get kind hit. of impromptu right. kind of. Or he's gonna thing. like put me in a headlock or be like, How dare you do he's that? Kind like, of smile and lead into it. it. It seemed like he thought it was gonna be some like, yes, uh, some little banter with Will and Smith, not fun, a right hook. Right. Another fun thing to watch is that the, the people sitting around Will Smith when he was yelling. Back oh my gosh. At the tables they're like kind of, they're like they're like in shock. What should I be thinking, I know. doing, right. saying? Yes. Yeah. I that, that to me was amazing. It yeah. really was. And I know there's the people out there that think it was a conspiracy. Man. Not a chance. I mean, I, I, of course, just those two the natural Acted reactions. in the moment. How uncomfortable were you watching it? I mean, to oh me, my. like, everybody was uncomfortable. The whole atmosphere from the show changed. Like, 100%. everybody got quiet. Everybody in the state, people were afraid to applaud or do anything after that. Right. It right. was insane. And it, it really was. And it wasn't his reaction to the joke itself. It was it was Will's reaction to looking at his wife. I guess so. It certainly seemed that way because he giggled at Go first. Go back. At, right. Yeah. At first, he was kind of yeah. like, you know, trying to shake it off. Then he saw his wife, and then it was all over. I, I mean, that's... That, that to me was go down as one of the most oh my gosh mm -hmm. moments I'll ever remember in my life on TV. I was getting yeah. in bed. Yep. I was know, already there. I was in bed. I was kind of like talking to my wife. Uh, I think we were about to text my little boy and my little girl like, hey, come in here and kiss us goodnight. Yeah, you right. got to go to bed. It's too late. Like they were, we let them stay up too late last night. So we were doing that. And I kind of saw the joke and went, oh man, that was. Maybe below the belt, right? I did think that. Yeah. Like, not get up and totally get punched yourself in the yes. face right. below the belt. Yep. But I did go, ooh, that, damn. Well, let me see that reaction. I turned away for a second. I looked back, and I went, wait, somebody's walking on the stage. <laughs> and I ca and my wife, and we then we looked back at the TV, and we were like, oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah. It, one of those where we, we went back and rewound it. Of course. After the whole yeah. segment was over. I was like, we got to go watch that again. I was about 10 steps ahead of you. I was already in bed. I was, yeah. I was looking through texts people had sent me right. to maybe get on the show. <laughs> and I like sift out the good ones right. and send them to Pete. I was doing that. And of course, Twitter just blew up. With, so it, it, it cut into my work time. Yeah. I'm sure. Ultimately, it kept that, me that's awake longer than I wanted to. Right. Because I kept watching the whole night. And then it got the best actor. And I was like, well, I let me see if this that. guy who threw a punch I know, on the insane. show. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And then he's going to get up there and tell, tell us all about love and taking care of people. And I'm like, what? This right. doesn't make sense. I mean, I guess technically he took care of his wife there, but it <laughs> yeah. wasn't exactly sp uh, showing love there. In, in addition to that, yeah. like, we've. Got we a lot got of football. shit going on here we today. Got we got football to I talk mean, about. I, so we're we're going to go through Chris's top five wide receivers yep. in the draft class, yep. which is always fun, fun Thank position. You. Yep. Um, but now I feel like this class, this position is getting more attention than the quarterbacks because the quarterbacks are seen as yeah. like, okay, right. not that great. They're still fun to address, but I think this group has created more buzz than the quarterbacks. You've got the I Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill thing going on, so receivers are top of mind, what it means for the draft. And you've got a list that is not – the garden variety top five receiver list so well you know me we've got a lot happening we do it, it, it's 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 a deep class it really is um 
it, it's got a little bit of everything. So beauty in the eye of the beholder Always. or beauty in the eye of what your roster needs. I think you're going to be able to find it. You know, some teams are going to be looking, hey, we need a big guy who can catch 50-50 balls and do that. And other teams are going to go, hey, we need the slot guy that can run really good routes and, and read defenses. There, there's all of that to be had here. It, it is going to be interesting. Now, I will say, I don't think like some of the top-end guys, I, I would say, I think are hair overrated. Pause that. Yep. Vader Nation right. is going to get you right there. He says, hey, Paul and Chris, big fan of the pod. We've all heard this draft class is so deep at wide receiver, yeah. but is it fair that, to say that this has kind of become a trend? How do you think this class lines up with the past three classes of yeah. good wide receivers? I don't think it's quite up to par with those ones. Maybe the depth – is there the depth is there definitely top end. yes the top end to me is not quite the same i feel like the last two or three drafts we've had top end where i've been like man we're talking about guys in the second round here that are like they're gift difference makers superstars i mean again it was what two drafts ago or three drafts ago where i had dk metcalf and aj brown as my one and two and people mm -hmm. were like you're crazy right. they're gonna go in the second round right. they did you know, but it speaks to also, yeah, there was some talented guys coming out in the class. You have those two examples, right. Cooper Cup, third round. Debo Samuel. Devontae wasn't a first-round pick. Tyreek Hill wasn't. Exactly right. There's a lot of years where it does it. And to me, it goes a little bit into the quarterback conversation here, too, mm -hmm. where it gets a little too into production. It gets a little too stats all the time. Where I want to go, again, I, hey, everybody, if we put DK Metcalf on Ohio State back in those days, his stats would have been right. different. Right. It would have looked different. I'm sorry. You know, we can't always put it on production and, oh, that makes me feel safe because it's production and he's on a winning team. You know, at, at times you got to look at it and go, wait, the guy's open all the time. I don't know. The quarterback's an idiot. The system itself is stupid. I mean, remember during those old, those days with A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf, I literally was making fun of Ole Miss on podcast right. going, I, I don't think they were really trying to win games. Like, it looked like they were literally going, wait, who are our best players? Let's not Let's give them the ball. Let's see if we can win without them. Let's yeah. see if we can do it with our the next group yeah. of best players. And that, you know, again, there's going to be some of that we're going to talk about here today, too, where I go – Again, this guy is a star. It's not his fault that the ball didn't come his way more. Let's uh, Before we get into these top five, yeah. let's take a look at what you did last year, your 2021 draft rankings. Let's go one through six. Uh, Jamar Chase, Devontae Smith, De'Ami Brown at three, Jalen Waddle four, Kadarius Toney five, then Terrence Marshall Jr. at six. So looking back at this almost a year later, yeah. what's your knee-jerk reaction to that list? Well, of course, you know, I went out on a limb with De'Ami Brown, right? That was kind of like my under-the-radar, I thought, guy. Um, he did not live up to those expectations. We saw a few plays here and there. I still got high hopes for him, but I think if we're going to realistic and, like, re-rank them, you know, obviously he's not. In fact, he's he's at the bottom of the list almost. He's is. We just don't know enough about him at this point. Still early. I yeah. still early. I know. But what we do know is Chase is a superstar. Yeah. yeah. We know Devonte Smith and Jalen Waddle are both budding superstars. And I would say, really, if you just went by last year, you'd put Jalen Waddle in front of Devonte Smith. Right. Waddle the slot the slot route running and then kind of the weapon reverse stuff. You know, his ability to accelerate, you know, zero to 60 in one step. Uh, you know, he's a guy that I, I should have ranked a little higher. And Kadarius Tony, even though he was, you know, hurt a little and had a few issues here and there, when you saw him healthy, he was a there difference maker. Flashes. There yeah. was. There was yeah. some flash strength, weapon, another weapon like Waddle was to, right. to it in a lot of ways. I see that list, Chris. Yeah. And I think about the, the little mini conversation we had before that about Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams. These guys not going in the first yeah, round. Right. You could really go one of two ways here with what's happening with the receivers thinking about what happened with the running backs in uh -huh. the last decade as uh -huh. well I you can look at jamar chase uh, Devonte smith and uh, waddle and say you gotta go get one of these real difference makers you could also be like you know what i don't i don't want to do that i'm going to get one in the third round is going to be a damn good player i'm going to go after another position in the first round so are you are you a fan of going to do it early or if you need a couple would you wait till second and beyond? Like, if it's that guy, like, listen, if you're sitting there and it's like, wait, I'm sold on this guy's a superstar, like, 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 like Chase. a Jamar Chase or a Devontae Smith or a Waddle, where you just go, wait, I'm sold. And I'm not yeah. saying everybody's going to be sold the same way, but right. if it's your organization and you're sold that, wait, this guy can come here and instant difference maker, boom, you make it. Yep. But if we're getting down the list now and we're going, Wait, it's we're getting down to the fourth receiver yep. on the list, and, and you're the, in the teens, and that's all you got a shot right. at, right? And the difference between the fourth receiver 
and maybe the eighth receiver is minimal yeah. and really debatable whether he's even better, but we just gave him a better grade because, hey, we were a little, we felt a little safer about one or two things. Yeah. That's when I would go, no, let's, okay. let's wait. Let's wait it out a little bit. Take a position that you, you need that might be a little bit more in dire need yeah. there. And, you know, there'll be some guys that, that can help your offense out at wide receiver. Road. That's yeah. the one thing, like, to your point here. It's it's there's a handful of guys in every round, the first four rounds where you can go, oh, they can come in and help your football team. Right. And and and, and I don't know if that's going to devalue the position. I do even wonder for this year's draft. Yeah. You know, will it devalue or maybe bring these guys down a little bit later in the first round because everyone's going to go, there's more to be had. We're right. not that desperate to take this guy right now. I would think there's going to be quite a bit of that thought out there. Before we get to specific names, you can even go yes, no with this, Chris. This last one I have before we get into the actual top five. Yeah, yeah. Is there a Jamar Chase type where you're like top ten? Hell yes, use a pick on him. I I, I think there is. Okay, I do. Okay, and we're gonna get to. We'll him. find that out. You know, the guy I look at though at my number one, uh, you, you I, think I look he's, at him. He's and, that good. Yeah. Okay. I, I I really do. No no question about it. But you know, again, you, to to your point, that's where I I think this is a very interesting conversation. Yeah. You know, I got like when you talked to me there, I brought me back to a conversation of like the draft from three years ago. Marquise Hollywood Brown, Oklahoma mm -hmm. highlights. They win. Stats are amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know, Nikhil Harry, pretty good stats. Look, those two guys yeah. got drafted in front of Debo Samuel, AJ Brown, and DK Metcalf. They're yeah. not. They're not in the class of those three guys. Right. You know, but but I think it's again the production. It gets way too overblown in this, and I want to go. Hey, you got to evaluate the situation as a whole here. Offense, quarterback. You know, right? Giving an effort to give the guy the ball. Okay. Yeah. So now we're into the top five. We're going reverse order. So your fifth ranked wide receiver in this class is Drake London, USC. I'm as surprised as everybody else out there. I, know. I thought he might be a little higher. So I know. Let's, let's start there. I really like him. Again, I, yeah. I really do. This, 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 this is my top five, and this is a hard. It's hard to make a top five. There's a lot here. All right, so Drake London, let's just start off with the positives right off the bat. Okay. All right, right off the bat, he's one of the greatest 50-50 jump ball mm. receivers Fun I've ever seen in the history of my evaluation period. There's yeah. no, been really nobody that I can sit here and go, 50-50 ball, no. It's not 50-50. It's kind of 90-10 with mm. this guy. I yeah. mean, that's kind of the way it is. It's one after another. So from that standpoint, his size is truly an elite thing he has. And it's not just size to say size. He uses it to benefit – you know, his skill set and his play, his ability to play the ball in the air, his vertical leap is real, you know, his ability to grab the ball and have people hanging on his arms and hold on to it, you know, position himself, the body control that way, all of that is top notch. And I think very, very impressive. So that would be the first thing where I just go, yeah. damn, I like that. Yep. All right. Second thing, the route running. Pretty freaking special for a guy his size. Okay. I mean, his ability. I had that question. Yeah. He was, a lot of 50-50 balls. I don't know how many precise well, routes he was running. Well, that's what we're going to get. You're right. There's a lot of 50-50 balls. Yeah. You see enough precise routes, though, on out routes, some double moves, the slant routes, you know, things of that where you just go, man. I mean, his ability to, first off, understand it like attack leverage, like, mm -hmm. you know, and, and really put the DB in an uncomfortable spot. And then off of that, he's very twitchy and quick. I haven't heard that a lot about him. He is. Like, he's got twitchy and quick. Now, people question that part well, of it. Well, he doesn't. This is it's a little difference here. Maybe I'm not explaining it the right. Twitchy and quick, and hey, set, hut, and gets off the ball, and the feet pitter patter, and boom, he sticks his foot in the ground, and it's sudden, and it's quick, and he can get you leaning one way a little bit, and yeah. then pop, 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 and come out, come out real quick. Yeah. And within that, have a great little initial burst of quickness to create some separation okay. now to what you're talking about yeah. he doesn't pull away from people after that okay and that's why to me he's the number five receiver on this list right i was here. gonna say up until yeah. then it sounded right. like you were talking about a top 10 pick. yeah right right and he's not that because it's there is separation does concern me and of course we get against nfl dbs where yeah. they're yeah they're a little bigger they're stronger they know how to play routes they're not as fooled by your route running and things like that right that's where i'm a little scared Led no the nation in contested catches this there past you go year. and that's really that's a good and a bad thing half the people are like that's awesome give <laughs> yes. me that guy right. the other half are like what, why was he so tightly contested I, I, exactly. why isn't he more open exactly now in, in a little bit of that is to what you said the route tree is not real extensive mm -hmm. you know so you so again you can play it that way to a degree all right also you know know why is he not that open or you know most contested also he was that guy who when everybody was covered the quarterback just said F 
I'm throwing it right. up to him because he'll catch it. I think he was targeted like 15 times a game I, it's, before he got it's hurt. It's insane. Insane. They throw yeah. a lot of balls to where you go, okay, yeah, he didn't get open and nobody's open, but they just throw it up to him. So that hurts that contested catch or right. getting open separation thing. Right. All right. But then I think the thing you're bringing me to here is real. You know, there is – didn't run the 40. I know he had an injury, but – there's a lack of true straight line explosiveness mm. and power. And that goes beyond just separating in the route, to route tree. Yeah, he gets – let's say he's running a 20-yard in cut. Okay, first off, yeah, he might not get great separation getting up to the 20-yard mark. But then he gets away from you a little when he makes the break and the move at the top of the stem to go and right. run the route. And so he's open. But then, yes, people can close on him pretty hurt, pretty fast. Okay. But he is big and got the extension. The other thing, why he's number five to me, too, I mean, I, I challenge people to really find me plays of yards after catch. Mm. He breaks no tackles. He pulls away from nobody. So that, to me, too, plays an effect. And you know me. I'm a little bit of a sucker for those kind of things. Sure. So, so I sure. like that explosive element. Can, can that you, – you talked about production yeah. and numbers. You don't like to read into that too much right. from college of the pro. Right. Could that be a, a product of – well, maybe they didn't run him on that many quick slants and hit him in stride. Maybe they didn't hit him on the down and in and give him the chance to run after the catch. Yeah, well, no, I, I don't. I think there's enough there to go. No, I saw enough where okay. he catches it as a good thrown ball and he, gets and he gets tackled. Yeah, or you know, makes maybe one guy miss and then as he starts to get going again, somebody yeah. tackles him and you go, okay, he got five okay. yards after the catch. So it, it's 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 a real thing. I think yeah. I didn't look at it and go, eh, it's, there's lack of opportunities here. You know, I I, there, I didn't watch and see it. I, sure. I was wondering as you as you were saying. Yeah, no, it it the, the, those those all those things are there. Now, he's got of course the speed concerns. There's no there's no doubt about that. But because of the size and the route running, he's going to be able to play outside. Yep. He is. You know, he understands how to set DBs up, play with their mind a little bit, yep. set up his own routes. And like I said, for a big guy, mm -hmm. like. His ability to stick his foot in the ground or get yeah, you leaning good. one way, pitter-patter to the right, and then, boom, I stuck my right foot in the ground and I made a 90-degree angle cut the other yeah. way, it is exceptional for somebody his size. Yeah. And that, to me, again, you know, even though we're talking about lack of explosiveness and, and things like that, in the NFL, we know you can scheme people up a little yeah, bit more. And yeah. if you can have some brains and run some routes, and they're going to put him in the slot, he's going to have inside-outside value a little bit that way. Right. And that's, you know, again, I think he's made for the NFL a little bit. Yeah. His route running is exceptional. The size and the 50-50 ball is an exceptional. He's number five on my list, though, because yeah. it's the thing you brought up first. Lack of true explosion, separation, yards after the catch. I'm going to make something happen. Right. That's why I make him five. I think he is really intriguing. All these guys are i mean they, they wouldn't be in your top five list right. they didn't have a lot going for him but he was such a spectacle this year when he was healthy i want yeah. to bring a couple of things cool they played at notre dame yeah so you know me i went down sure. get as close to him as i can i know you're a physical traits guy this is a different looking I know. dude i know he's listed at six four six five he but looks it's big, six, bigger six than that. to me he does i saw him at the combine he's got I the wings there. okay so right. you have the same I thing i mean. saw him in pads yes. next to the other dudes right. as well it's different in a really good way square shoulders oh my high cut waist yeah, yeah. And he's got arms and legs next everywhere level athleticism i know and he does he looks bigger than he plays bigger than six yes. four yeah he really does when i watched it and turned on the film i thought i was gonna read on the scouting thing six 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 yeah. five and change, you know, it's a it's a Calvin Johnson ish look. Maybe not quite the thickness and the legs and the butt, right? But that kind of like, whoa, that guy's a lot bigger than the DBs out there covering him, right? For sure. And I had this thought too, you know, watching him that night, and also in the last couple of days thinking about our show here today. In the NFL, think about how many, how often, instead of just the post over the top or the nine route over the top, and that happens too, but yeah. The 15 yard down the field to the boundary back shoulder fade is I think of him a lot with that exactly. And this new slot fade, OBJ caught one for a touchdown in the Super Bowl where they kind of bend out a little bit. It's just the fade with 10 more yards of the field. Yes, right. Those two routes, what you, know, you could run him there six, eight, ten times a game. And if he's not your best guy, like if you're drafting to be the number one guy, probably an issue here. Yeah. But if you got a great tight end, you got a great number one. Uh huh. This is a luxury pick that would make sense to me in the teams. Yeah, that, I, I wouldn't be shocked either. Yeah, we have a fast guy over here who right. can make plays after the catch and do all that. We got the tight end. Now we need 
you know, the red zone size guy. Yeah. Or it's third and four, and we got to throw else. a slant where he can just box the guy out and we can go to him and he's yeah. going to snag the ball out of the air. I, to me, again, that's why I even said to start this, a little bit of this is going to be in what you need, what you got on your roster already, you know, what you fancy altogether. But I think, you know, your your point is real. Mm-hmm. And even without the great speed, some you know, I because I, I even was texting with some, like, football people over the weekend, kind of telling them my list. Yeah. Kind of wanted to sure. hear their pushback yeah. and their thoughts a little yeah. bit you know and the one thing i came to too is as i just continue to digest it a little bit because i drive myself crazy thinking about this <laughs> all weekend you know guys like him can get open on the outside even without the great speed like i'll tell you like michael thomas right in new yeah, orleans yeah. not great speed he's really a slot guy but you know to to something you brought up before you know you run the slant you run the five yard under mm-hmm. you know you run the out then break back in kind of under return you run the slant and then return back out you know you get to you do all those releases and you're good and they start to look the same and then all of a sudden the guy does one of those releases and oh boom he went straight down the sidelines he's running the fade this time oh shit oh he's got me by a step even though he's not that fast because he set me up with all the other routes right or you know or hey you didn't fool me and to your point I'm over the top and I'm covered them. Yeah. So what? Right. I mean, Rodgers, Mahomes, whatever, they're just going to go, I'm going to put it behind him in a spot and he'll catch it. Right. And you won't. Right. And that's the value of a guy like this. It is a size league. And the guy's got an elite skill with his size and his ability to go up and get those 50, 50 balls. The, the one question that I had highlighted from, uh, from social here from swish B asking if, uh, does Drake London's lack of breakaway speed scare you at all? I wanted to yeah. be sure to get yeah. to that. I think you already answered it, but we yeah. can finish with that. Sure. That that is what's kind of keeping you from having him higher. It is. It's what scares me a little bit. It is. That's 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 why he would be five to me. It, again, I think it's you know a little bit of that unknown of, man, I wish there were some more yards after catch. Man, I wish he just blew by people a little bit more covering him because we know that you know the DBs in the NFL are going to be a little bit better. Yes, th- those are those are real concerns. But either way, I still think the guy, you know. He has a very high ceiling, and it's a high floor, too, I think, because of the way he runs routes, his quick right. feet, and, and, of course, that size. All right, Drake London, yeah, USC wide receiver number five. One note on him, fractured ankle late October. Oh, I know. Hasn't been able to work out. He'll have a solo pro day uh, early April, right now listed as April 5th, uh, to give everybody a look and see where he is with that comeback. Okay, moving up to number four. What do you see? Number four, we're going Traylon Burks, U- uh, USC, Arkansas. Excuse me. Yeah. And I know – I'm probably lower on this guy as well. I don't know. Just like Drake London. I mean, listen, I pay attention to sports media. And I, I, I don't know if they most people put three receivers in front of Trey Burks, but I, I am going to here. Two, two three, or four is yeah. about, about, about where, you he, where yeah. he sees. Okay, yeah. all right. You know, Again, we're talking about another size guy for Six, sure. 6'2", 225. Right. Big. I mean, big, thick, different size yeah. than, than Drake London, right. what we're talking about right. here. You know, you brought up before the show, LaVisca Chennault yeah. from yeah. the Jacksonville Jaguars. Thought that was a fair comparison. And I brought surely. him up because he was a big guy where right. people were like, I like him. What do I do with him? Yes. I, I, I kind of sense some of that now with him. And I think that's kind of where I feel with Traylon Burks too, right? So there's, there's of course, the size is real. 50-50 balls are real, mm-hmm. right? You see, unlike Drake London, we see some evidence here of this guy being able to just run by people and go beat a guy on a go route for a 40-yard touchdown. So there is more of that here than with him. But am I am like wowed by the speed with Trey Burks? Absolutely not. Yeah. Do I have a little bit of a fear of you know separation in right. the NFL running routes? I definitely do. I think a lot of people feel that because yeah. I mean he was right. mid to high four fives. I think at the combine. Yes, he was right. So he was at four, this five, position, five. right? And, and you're that big anyway. People yes. are going to wonder. Yes, right. So that 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 is a real thing. And there's a lot of film on it to justify it where you go, hey, he doesn't separate as well as you would like. Mm-hmm. But now where I put him in front of a Drake London and think he's a little different is back to like what you said. It's a little bit – he's a weapon. People in the NFL know how to use these guys now anymore. It doesn't have to be traditional, oh, he runs a slant and he runs an out. and it, Who the f- – cares he runs straight we throw right. him a screen we sneak him behind the line of scrimmage and throw him the ball in the flat he makes shit happen and that's to me would be my banner thing with Traylon Burks is you know Traylon Burks 
He makes shit happen. Yeah. That's what I would say about him. Because it's the equivalent of f shit up in the right, right, There you go. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, it just I, I'm not wowed, like I said, by his ability to separate from DBs. I am wowed by what he can do with the ball in his hand, though. Yeah. And the way he can break tackles. And for whatever reason, he's one of those guys that you go, I don't know, when he has the ball in his hand, for some reason he's faster than when he doesn't have it and he's running routes. I, I, it's the weirdest thing. Right. You know, I, I, that, that, that to me is weird. So it's there. The route running, is it special? No. Do I think there's potential for it to be a lot better? I do. I saw enough on film to go, wait, this kid, you talk about the quick feet off the line of scrimmage, being able to make some short area cuts and things like that. They're very good. Now, we get down the field and we're running a post corner at full speed. Okay, that's not his cup of tea. Mm. You know, he's a big guy. He's a little bit clunky like that way. He's not going to be like, you know, a, you know, a Devontae Adams where it's going to be like, you know, run straight, run to the post for four steps, four steps, now run back out, you know, and four steps, it's perfect. It's like, oh my gosh, that was a machine. That's right. how you would write up. Traylon Burks, if you ask him to do that, it's going to be like, boom, boom, four <laughs> steps to the post. Boom, boom, five or six steps coming out of it and rounding it out. That's not where his money is. So, so. it's nice he can do a lot of things. Yes. It's nice he's a great looking athlete. Yes. Looks different, a lot of receivers. Right. Where do you play him most of the time? I think he's going to be played in the slot, weapon-ish most of the time. Play action, boom, over the middle slant because he's fearless. He's got great hands. He snatches it out of the air. Yeah. He doesn't give a shit if people Giant are going to knock his head off either. Yeah. Yes, he's got big hands. So And he catches a lot of 50-50 balls and balls in traffic over the middle. Right. But to me, that's what he is. Slot guy, work him there. Slot fade like you talked about with Odell yeah, Beckham yeah. Jr. Hey, run fake to his side. Now he comes out out the back door on the other side with the bootleg right yeah. oh i threw the ball in the flat like to debo samuel yeah to me he's a weapon yep. he's a weapon who you're going to continue to grow with some of the receiving things one of the things i wrote you know i've heard people say hey he's aj brown i can't say he's aj brown aj brown first off is like built like the incredible hulk Traylon burks i saw him in person his body is not my favorite it's a little soft for a wide receiver all right but you know, the guy that I came to my mind a few times, and, and now he's bigger than this person. I get that. To me, is, is Jarvis Landry-ish. That's where I really came away going, get the ball in his hands and he'll do some That's things. a nice compliment. But, like, just running routes down. He's not going to yeah. scare DBs all the time with, like, oh, my gosh, Jar Jarvis Landry's coming at me. He might run a go route or a post route. Right. No, that's not what he is. But you find ways to get him within the system, and he can make plays with you after the catch right. and block and do all those type of things, too. People have a lot of time this time of year to think about the draft and compare to, to like find someone in the NFL that looks like him. And the name that comes up a lot is Debo Samuel. Yeah, I'm sure. amused by it because number one is a great compliment to the kid, but like Debo Samuel, he's not the best receiver in the NFL, but he, there's no one else like him. And he's basically a running back. He has a lead and traits, a receiver. Is what you're saying. I mean, he's carrying the ball right. Not as much as he's catching it, but he's running back slash receiver as much as anybody. Yeah. Just because I've heard it so much and I see it so much, do you see any similarity yeah. between Debo Samuel and this and this kid? I, I think so. You know, one the way they can snatch the ball out of the air, similar. Uh, he's going to be a weapon like Debo. You can give this guy reverses and toss sweeps, and he's going to be natural. Mm -hmm. And because of the size and strength, he's not going to be like, oh, no, there's a linebacker coming. Let me get down. Yeah, you know, He's going to go, wait, I can make a move, or I'll give him a shoulder and try to absorb it and keep going. So that's where I do see the Debo. Now, I don't think he's got the rocket up his ass Debo Samuel has. Right. I mean, Debo Samuel, where he is special, is his 0-60 to 60 is like as good as anybody in football. I mean, he can take off. That's not where, you know, Traylon Burke's going to make his money. But he's got good speed. He can make you miss in space. He's going to break arm tackles. You know, and that's that's where he's good. I mean, again, you know, you watch the A&M game. You watch the Georgia game. You watch Alabama. The, res the DBs aren't scared of his ability to go by them, but they respect it enough. Yeah. Alabama, you see him catch a ball on the right sideline. He stops and then cuts back across the field and outruns everybody for a touchdown. Yeah, they, I mean, eight, that's what I'm talking about with him a little bit. Eight catches, buck 79, two touchdowns against Alabama. I know. I that's know. pretty good. It is. Sounds to me like if, if a GM likes him, and yeah. tell me if you think things work this way, you need to get time with the play caller, whether it's the offensive coordinator or the head coach, after you decide you really like him, to spend a day being like, okay, we think he's awesome. We think he's worth our first-round pick. How would you use him? Yes, right. That's what it's got to be. be. Like that kind of synergy He's, in that in that building. I, I agreed. I think that it's again. This is going to be a team that's going to go. We kind of have our two traditional receivers. Yeah. 
Now we need a guy that can kind of do a lot of different stuff and just make some plays for us. We got we to gotta have that. Yeah, he might not be the guy we go to. Like, we need a 10-yard out route or a real intricate route in a big situation. Mm -hmm. But, you know, whether it's a second and six reverse or toss sweep or, you know, like I said, the bootleg or wide receiver screen, he can catch a wide receiver screen, make somebody miss, break a tackle, and take off. And all of a sudden you go, damn, that big sucker just went down the sideline yeah. for 40 yards here. Right. That was pretty impressive. And that's where, you know, he's got real potential in the NFL. He pushes off a little too much. You know, but man, plays through contact when running routes, people run out all over him, physically holding on to him. Uh, he, it does not bother him. And he's kind of just a, a football player. And like I said, see enough foot quickness to think the route running can get better. Right. You know, and again, you got to piece that to get stuff together sometimes. Uh, that, that's a little bit of a projection, but Traylon Burks, I, I certainly like the player. Two wide receivers in, big receivers. Drake London at five, Traylon Burks, Arkansas, 6'2", 225. At number four, number three, what kind of name do we have here? Number three, I mean, we're going off the board here. We're going off the board. Welcome to Chris Sims. Yes. Ville. Chris yes. Sims Crazyville, all right? Whatever you want to say. I'm not backing down from this shit, though, all right? I'm going Alec Pierce from Cincinnati. Another big receiver. Another Six, big three, receiver. Two, ten. Yes. Another big receiver. Has a rocket up his ass. How many? Uh, three. It's a good nobody can Nobody can run with Alec Pierce. Let me just tell you this. Yes. Here's the bit. Here's because people are going to go, Alec Pierce, what? And I'm gonna, they're going to go, oh, his stats or whatever. And I'm going to go, wait, wait. But the, they were 12 and 1. He was definitely the best receiver on their football team. Mm hmm. Well, what I would tell anybody right off the bat is just like because people aren't going to like want to buy into this right off the bat. I would go just go watch the Alabama game. I think he's got two catches. Right. Again, two catches. Not his fault. Again, I'd question the coach and the quarterback to go, do you guys know who you have over there and are we watching the same game? Mm -hmm. Alabama was scared shit of him. Their DBs after the first few plays went, oh, my gosh, we can't run with them. We're backing the f*** off. Was he running by people? Running he by. He runs by everybody, Paul. There's nobody that can run with this kid. Nobody. And he did run low 4-3s at the four, combine. He ran 4-4-1. Four, 4-4-1. Four, one. Four, four, I thought one. he was in the 4 threes. No, no, but either way, okay. our, our next guy's going to be in the 4 threes. Okay. But either way, his times and everything he did at the combine were, were, were phenomenal. Okay. All right? But nobody runs with him. All right, and then you watch Alabama too. There was the only guy, and just if you watch that game, the only guy they were scared of in the game. Mm. They third downs doubled them. They because they knew like, wait, this is the guy that they throw a slant route. You know, we're better than everybody else in this field, but this is the one guy that could f us up. They weren't going to let that happen. Mm. Arguably, he's in the conversation for the best route runner in the in the the whole draft. His ability to get off the line of scrimmage with different releases. And do it like a pro, with other, with, whether it be the footwork, the hands, whatever. It's as good as it gets. It's, it's, it's put it on a reel type stuff. And then I think you couple that with the pure athleticism. And I go, I don't know what you want to say. There's nobody, like I said, that can line up with him bump man to man and be by him. He would classify as the guy where I'd go, see, this is to me like the DK Metcalf or the Chase Claypool where I'm going to go, you know, I don't know what his stats were. I think he had 800, 900 yards receiving. Mm -hmm. I want to go, if the offense had a clue a little bit and Ritter was a little bit more aware of, like, th this actually, watching his film made me less high on Ritter. Oh, I, it really it. did because I started to sit there and go, oh, my gosh. I mean, come on. Why are you not looking at this one-on-one -on -one matchup? This guy keeps running by people. And it wasn't just this year. I mean, his first three years, he had under 1,000 yards. I know. somebody that I big, know. that athletic. I get it. I mean, his production wasn't there. I, I, I get it. Now, they're just, you know, they're a college offense. Yep. They are. They don't, like, feature guys in the pass game. They kind of just like, hey, this is what we do, and we go there with it. But I, like I said, I would throw this under the DK, Chase Claypool, those type of guys where I'd go, it's not his fault he had 800 yards receiving. If they threw the ball to him like five more times a game, he would have had 100 yards in every game. He yeah. could have had 1,400 yards receiving. If you just look at the times where he's open and you go, slam dunk, just throw it out there. He's going to get it. You know? So I look at that plus the ability to run the routes, you know, snag the ball out of the air. 
I, I just don't see anything about the kid to where you'd go, what is there not to love about this kid? What's the negative aspect? There's absolutely nothing. The only negative is going to be like the production stats thing, like you said. And I'm going to say and, you're putting that on him, and that's not fair. And it's not like the stats are bad. No, if, they're not if, bad. If you're watching along right. with us, you, you can see it. Last three seasons at Cincinnati, over 1,800 yards, over 100 receptions, over 17 yards per per reception, which is very good. Yes. And a lot of one-on-one type of balls, not just the, the deep ones, but the, the short fades. Yeah. I mean, they saw him one-on-one and gave him a lot of chances. They did. And they I, did. I, there should have been more, I was what I'm telling right, you. Right. I'm telling you, it should have been a lot more. I, uh, you saw the Notre Dame game. Yeah. He had a couple of great catches. Couple great, yeah. I mean, couple of great catches. But Paul, if we went back, I'd go, no, no. If the ball was well thrown, he walks into the end right, zone. Right. We go, it's a great catch because the ball was underthrown. He had to like, wait, I beat the guy by eight yards. Now yeah. let me turn around and stop and fall out of bounds. And we go, great catch. And I'm gonna go, yeah. should have been a f- walk in. Yeah. We just left 50 yards on the field for the guy's stat book. Yeah. But they're gonna go, he didn't produce. I feel like that this is the best example yeah. of Chris Sims standing up tall and being Chris Sims more, even more so than you would have been. We first started doing this three years ago. You probably would have had him at fifth or honorable mention. I would have chickened out. And the DK Metcalf situations, the Chase Claypool, it something does. The inside has been like, you know them. what? Not this year. I like this guy better than everybody else, and I'm not going to just kind of hedge my bed and have him down here just so right. I have his name on there. Right, right. I think he's better than everybody else does, yes. and my rankings are going to show. I'm, I'm, uh, that's what I came to, Paul. Yesterday on Sunday, I was literally I, I agonized over this stuff. I mean, like I'm, my wife would be like, "What are you thinking about?" I'm like, oh, "I'm thinking about these f-ing receivers." And this like, is the one that ruined your Sunday. Well, this is the one where I was going like originally. You had him lower. Had him penciled at five. Yeah. And as the day went on, I went. I got up in the morning. I went through the guys. I went through the guys film again. Yep. Right. And kind of went through it. And I just went, wait, I, I'm, I'm docking him because I'm a chicken and because, mm. like, other people don't have him up high on the right. list. Or, or, you know, his stats aren't as good as that guy, so I'm going to give the other guy. And, and that's where I feel like over the last three or four years yeah. I've learned. Like, I'm not going to go that route. Right. It's not his fault that he wasn't in the team or the quarterback or the system that knew how to give him the ball the right way. Right. You know, and even the year Deontay Johnson came out, I was a huge fan of his, but there was a little bit of that too. And I was like, oh, He's, I kind of want to make him top five, but oh, he went to a Mac school, and I'm I'm just gonna chicken the f- out like yeah. I did with Chase Claypool, and that's where I self scouted myself this year. <laughs> <laughs> give me give me your lead sentence. You you're driving home, okay? Got that twenty, what, however long it is, drive home. One of your buddies in the NFL calls you and's like, dude, you are f- crazy for having Alec Pierce yeah. at number three. Yeah. What's your first sentence? My first sentence would be, do I like. Bigger, faster Jordy Nelsons. That's what I like. Yeah. That sounds good to me. Yeah. I you, oh wait, I can get Jordy Nelson, but it's ten years later, evolution. Yeah. And he's got an extra tenth off his forty. I'll take it. Yeah. I mean, first off, he's polished an NFL ready. Like to me, he's the one where you can go, Oh, he's it looks like he's been coached and how to run routes. I don't know who coached him or whatever. But it's a little bit of a different look that way. And then when you couple it up with the pure, raw, physical explosiveness yeah. and the size, uh, that's the first thing I thought of. The first time, the first few plays I saw him, I saw him take off. I went, oh, my gosh. Like, like, I can't believe this kid. Whoa, this isn't just a combine like he ran a good combine 40 and the film doesn't look like that. Uh, and then I sat there for a few more minutes and I went, this guy's f- just a faster Jordy Nelson. I mean, it's he reminded me of. Uh, so that would be my banner statement to, to those people. And let me say this too. Yes. As I told you, like I sent out a text message with like my five, six receivers to a few people in the NFL, right? Yeah. And just want to hear it is. I'd love to hear your pushback. And of course, I get some pushback here and there. But I said, hey, please tell me if you think this list is crazy. Yeah. Nobody told Nobody me they thought that. the list was crazy. Did anybody come back with, with, with questions on this one? No, not really. Yeah. This one was like kind of like, yeah, nobody really questioned it. I, and then nobody did. So we'll see where it goes. Yeah. I got some questions about some guys that weren't on my list. Yes. As we'll get to here. Which we are going to reveal itself which, which here very soon. Which we are going to get to. Because <laughs> the Ohio State guys are not both one and two, and we're getting down uh, to one and two. I, people out there are probably doing some math and like, wait a second. We only have two, two left. left. Yes. Right. With the Alabama guy. We got two Ohio State I guys. Know. Maybe a, a player to be named later. Yeah. Maybe some names that aren't going to be on here. Okay. Yep. Number two. What are we looking at? Well, number two. The most pleasant surprise of the draft for me. 
and that's Christian Watson from North Dakota State. Another big receiver, Another six four two ten. Big receiver. Yeah. Right. I mean, also much higher, or you know, fairly noticeably higher than some other yeah. experts. So, what he, did you like most that made you push him up here? You're going to hear him more and more. I have no. I have all the confidence in the world that you'll continue to hear his name more and more as we go by here. As high as two, though. You know, maybe not number two. You know, maybe not. But mm. I think you're going to start to for sure hear like, oh, he's a first round wide receiver. Yeah. That, that's for sure. You know, and I think there's been some people who dabble that he might go at the end of the first or whatever else. I, I just, you know, again, I sit here and go, do you like DK Metcalf? Do you like Chase Claypool? <laughs> You know, do you like Mike Evans for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Because that's who Christian Watson is to me. I mean, that's who he is. I mean, first off, you know, him or the guy we're going to talk to at number one are the, the freakiest, most explosive people in the draft. Mm. I mean, it's a low level of competition. I understand that. I get it. So it's hard to look at it and go, wait, well, this is not an NFL DB or anything like that. But again, the amount of ground that's covered in the time that's covered, uh, to me, it popped off the screen as much as anybody in the draft, except for the number one guy, who I think it's very equal to. Yeah. But, you know, okay. I mean, run by people all day long. Really? Doesn't matter. The time, the, mm -hmm. at least the, the, the film looks like the time at the combine to me. And, and the time once again? Four, four three, six. Okay. I'm going to get it, just make sure I got it right here. Oops, I'm on the wrong guy still. Noteworthy. But it, it's right, it's four, three. It's, yeah. it's top of the line in just about every category. You know, again, I didn't watch this guy till maybe the 10th, 11th receiver, right? Yeah. I just, but this is where I love it too, is, you know, again, when you watch them all consecutively, you know, yes, there's the talent gaps, and you can, you question all that. But you're also watching to where you're going. Wait, I just watched this guy run down the field. Mm -hmm. Whoa, this guy's running down the same field. It's 100 yards, and got a line every five yards. But different competition. But different competition. But I can block them out and go. This guy's covering that field quicker than that guy okay. was covering that field As without had... without looking at the guys chasing him. Right. You know, I watch, I watch, and I had that question written right. down in all caps. I mean, it looks like the fifth graders playing at recess with the second graders. There, there's definitely you, part of that. How do you I know. Project that? I know that it's going to be, it is going to be part of the projection. But I think when you just look at the size, the skill, you know, what you saw on film, seeing the guy in person in in Indy a few weeks ago, seeing the workout itself, you just go, whoa, that's this kid's like a real specimen. First off, I would argue his acceleration off the line of scrimmage is as good as anybody in the, the draft. Mm. I, it's up there with anybody. I mean, and then... Are you talking about just the, the just speed the quickness get or, or the, or the getting away from the press ability, coverage? Both of them are really impressive. But the ability to just like, wait, I got press coverage. Let me, you know, jump, you know, get to a... Get off the line. My feet are square. I'm going to inside release, and now I'm going to turn it on. He's by people within three steps. He stacks them. It's gone. It's over. And because of the level of play, he's five, ten yards by them. Right. But also, like, slant route. Runs a slant route, three steps, cuts off that outside leg, that right leg. He breaks through. I mean, he just absolutely explodes out of cuts. You know, with the ball in his hand, to me, this is the closest to what you want to say with your Debo Samuel. Yeah. With just his – ass and hair are on fire it's just <laughs> he gets it and he doesn't know anything but 100 miles per hour yeah he catches slants over the middle he can rip them out of the ground now there's some questions like his hands are a little bit iffy for a guy we're talking about that i look at to go he's a top 20 pick in my opinion now that the second best receiver and the hands are iffy that doesn't necessarily go well, together we're iffy iffy in the sense of we're holding it to a first round like but like a first round standard, mm -hmm. but I don't go iffy. Like oh, I don't know if this guy will be able to catch in the NFL. Mm -hmm. The the drops I saw, I look at it and went, this is a guy that didn't get the f ball enough, so now he's going to yeah. get the ball for the first time with three minutes left in the first quarter, and he can't wait to catch it, and he's already looking upfield because he wants to f show the universe. I'm going to make this guy miss and turn up the corner and run for 70 yards. So the concentration drops to me. Okay. So he does have a few of those. There's no question. All right, but. He's also got some of the most damnedest, unbelievable catches, I would say, out of anybody in the draft, too. So that's where I come to the fine line and go, uh, I'm going to chalk this up to a little bit of a guy that wants to do something after the catch so much. I don't look at it a guy like, again, on, he's open or whatever. He's not fighting the ball. I don't look at it like, oh, he's coming at him, and he's like, oh, I can barely catch it. Uh, it's, it's none of that. It all looks natural. It's just I think it's a guy who's – 
I've been with those guys before. Right. They want to make it happen. You know, Brandon Marshall used to drop a ball like that in every game. Right. Because he was so, oh, I haven't got the ball, and now he got it, and he wanted to grab it so quick and rip it so he could face plant somebody in the ground and make somebody miss. And, oh, shit, I left the ball there. I dropped it. Shit. It's a, it's a part of some guy's game. I mean, Jamar Chase was definitely worth where he went. There you go. Dropped All year few. long, he dropped him. Right. Right. It's just part of what you live with. Let's go back to your drive home. Yeah. After you talk to the uh, NFL friend about Alec Pierce, someone else calls you and says, I want a big receiver, 6'4 ish, 210 plus. Why should I take Watson instead of London? Oh, I would just go because this kid is just so much capable of doing more than London. First off, like, you know, his ability to make people miss in the open field, change direction, it's, it's not good. It's phenomenal. And the, the, the yards after catch that we talked about, London was wanting us, we want yeah, more. Yeah. You're, you're not going to want it more with this kid. He is, he gets all the meat off the bone every time. And he is catch the ball, and there's no nonsense. It's get right up the field, and he pulls away from people. So, you know, that that's where I would go. He's a little different. He can separate truly in the route running, right, where, yes. That's he, huge. I know. It's really well explained, that too. That, to me, is where he's a different level. I put the question on a phantom yeah. caller that would call you in your drive home, but I, I had that question, too. Okay, same size, much bigger name. Doesn't mean he's better. But people out there are probably wondering, God, if I want a bigger receiver, why this guy? Uh, uh, that, that, that to me explained is the guy. It very well. it, you it's, explained it really it's, well. It's rare to have a guy this size run the way he does. And to me, it's it's in the it's in the class of the freakiest of the freak NFL wide receivers when I watch him. Like mm -hmm. I said, the names I brought up, Metcalf, Claypool, Mike Evans in Tampa. That, that's who I think we're looking at here is that awesome, type of player. Awesome comparison. Yeah. I, I have one question here yeah. from social, and it's I, you've kind of summed it up, but I think so many people would be thinking this. At Thomas Gatz TV says, uh, Watson obviously physically dominated everyone in North Dakota State with how explosive his combine was. Is it fair to say he's just an elite athlete that would have done similar things versus better competition? Yeah, no, I have no doubt about it. You put him on – again, You, I, I always think about this stuff. You know me. You put him on Alabama yep. or Ohio State, we're all going, this is a top 10 pick. Yeah. It's it, – it, yes. This is – you know, they give him – Paul, he gets to do running back stuff. They I, put him yeah, at right. tailback. Yeah. I mean, it's – it's Good return guy as it, well. Amazing return guy. Yeah. So to me, this is a guy that can run all the routes you want in your route tree, and then he has the weapon, and then he has the, you know, hey, he's going to take pressure off our offense every now and then because he's just going to go for 70 yards, whether we throw the ball three yards to him or 70 yards down the field. Either one are viable options with this guy. Right. And that, to me, is, again, where he's special. And I, I will be absolutely shocked if you don't start to hear his name climb up the – mock drafts i really will be because it, to me it's just too eye-popping and too special but hopefully at some point here in the next three weeks we, we can spend a pod where i mean today we're, we're getting to know the yeah, rankings and right. why we can kind of maybe match where they would fit best in the first round i'm not asking for that here but before we move on top half of the first round like one through I, 16 I, somewhere I, in there i look at them that way yeah. i do a hundred percent you know i yes i mean there's just this this is a special special specimen to me like that's it. elite in a lot of areas and like i said the only thing you're questioning is you know people are going to question the school okay i get it i i understand that i'm trying to i'm here to try to tell you that i think the speed translate i've been around for a long time i'm pretty good at this stuff i'm i'm hopefully that's why you listen to me i'm here to tell you it translate and you know what was the last thing i was going to say yeah the, the, but when you're talking about the only negative is Hey, I, you know, I wish the hands were a hundred percent all the time. Everything else, you go, no, that's a hundred. Yeah. Uh, again, I got to take the context of the drops and things like that, and then that that was at least my assessment of that. But I think this is a first round receiver all the way, maybe the most physically gifted wow. receiver in the draft, certainly in the conversation, in my opinion. Well done. Yeah. You're four in here. Before we get to one five, Drake London, four Traylon Burks from Arkansas, three Alec Pierce, Cincinnati. To Christian Watson, North Dakota State. So now here's where I get to tee you up. And I, I don't know which one of the Ohio State receivers is going to be one, but I mean, I get to learn about Olave or, or, or Wilson here, right? Yeah, no, you don't. Sorry. I know. I'm, I'm no Ohio State guys in my top five. I, I understand. I'm going to be – and at Ohio State, I'm sure they love me there already too because I was so good <laughs> with Justin Fields last year. But I really love Olave. 
Yep. I like Wilson a lot. Yep. I like Olave more than Wilson. Okay. I will say that. Yep. They were certainly the guys I looked at right on the fringe of this list. Yeah. You know, and I understand they're popular names, and I'll I'll dive into it more. Yes. But they're not Jamison Williams of Alabama. Let me just tell you that. Jamison Williams, number one. I want to hear about him. Yep. What you do with the injury, and yeah. we're going to get to the Ohio State guys after uh-huh. this. But right. why is Jamison Williams Williams number one? Jamison Williams is like to me the most slam dunk, easy valuation I've seen so far. I mean, again, uh, Jerry he's Jerry Judy with another gear, mm. right? He's Devonte Smith with a little more strength on to his game than Devonte Smith. You know, I look at Jamison Williams and just go, you name it, he can do it. You know, arguably the best route runner in the draft. Arguably the best yards after the catch after the draft. Arguably the guy that I'd go, oh, we just want to throw a go route. He's the guy I want to throw it to. You know, get to see it against all types of competition. Get to see all types of routes. You know, has for even for a guy that's yeah, six one and a half, 179 pounds, plays like Devontae Smith, plays way stronger than his size would indicate. Mm. And again, that's not only just a route running. Yeah, he can take some bumps and and some rubbing and some tugging as is going down the field. And maybe I shouldn't have put it that way, the rubbing <laughs> and the tugging. Uh, but but I know, getting an X-rated <laughs> podcast here. But also, what I was more impressed with, too, is how many tackles he breaks, mm. you know, to me, compared to the Ohio State kids, that's this is first off he's faster than the Ohio State kids, right which is off where the bat. he was, right, right, at Ohio exactly, State which is crazy. Yeah, no, he makes way more happen after the catch, right, and he breaks tackles. Like you watch Jamison Williams clips, you watch a game, slants over the middle, runs through arm tackles, stiff arms people to the ground, turns it back on, runs for forty yards. His start stop ability, I mean him. And Christian Watson, it's it's off the charts good for their double moves. Like, their ability to go down and run a 10-yard, I'm going to stop and then restart and go. I mean, it's 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 as good as anybody in the NFL. It's it's that type of good. To me, this is a, a slam dunk superstar receiver, but he has the ACL question, and right. that, that, that puts a question mark in this thing. Want to get to the ACL yeah. for sure and what that means. First, though, I want to, I want to spend just a moment here. I know you're not a big numbers guy. Yeah. Production in college can mean a lot. It doesn't have to mean everything. 20 yards per catch, yes. right under 20 yards per catch right. in the SEC. Better than Waddle, better than Smith, better than Judy. What's your read into that yards per it, catch? It's real. It's real, too. And then this is to me where, you know, not all 50 yard posts are created equal. Right. You know, I'm going to get into a little bit of where, like where I go, hey, Garrett Wilson, 50 yard post, is usually against like the most unbelievable look. Yeah. And he's matched up against the safety. And I'm going to go, Jamison Williams, 50 yards posts are like corners playing a man to man. Safety's also back there trying to run with him, and he runs by both of them. Like, that's to me is where it's a little different. It, that, that's where it, it, he separates himself, especially from the Ohio State guys, but the rest of them. And then I think the yards after catch thing is real. That's where I think it adds to it. So, wait, he can run deep. He can run a post corner and never even break stride. He can do all that. But but you see, you see like so many plays where you go, oh, he caught the ball at five yards, but he got 27 because mm-hmm. he just ran through an arm tackle or stiffed arm somebody and turned it on and made one more guy miss. And okay. that to me is where he's a little different than the rest of the group. Yeah. And it's, I mean, everybody, not everybody, but all these first round pick wide receivers in Alabama all had really good yards per catch. But 19.9 is, an, is enough different where I wrote that and I'm like, I've got to find out is this just him running by people? Or is there something else? And the fact that he's doing more than just catching the post over the top says a lot. It's it's a little of all of it. It's yeah. a little of everything, let alone he always has that ability to, you know, run the post, run by everybody, go right. route outside, run by everybody. I mean, to me, he was by far the guy that DBs were scared of more than anybody that I watched in this whole thing, right? You know, of course, the Watson, Christian Watson, it was a low-level competition. Some of those DBs were, like, literally running before four seconds before the snap, right. like, oh, I got to get back. But, yes, you could tell in every Alabama game you watched, DBs, even when they wanted to bump, when it got close to set hut, they started going backwards. Yeah. And like, oh, I'm going to give him some room because he's going to run by me. And he can run by anybody. He is so smooth. It is – he – you know, whether he wants to run the, you know, more of the slant and then come back out, chop the feet, stick the foot in the ground, or he wants to run, let's say, the 20-yard in cut, and he runs at full speed and just 
puts one foot in the ground and seamlessly breaks over the middle. That to me is where he's good. And then the last thing is, you know, I, I always write this down. It's kind of like he, he does the Debo, sna Debo snatch out of the air. Mm. The, 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 and that to me is where him and Watson and even Pierce had this a little bit too, to me, where they separated themselves. They can catch the ball full speed running over the middle and just – never break stride and rip the ball out of the air and there's no slow down tradition or uh, transition step mm. to go wait now let i tuck the ball away now let me regather and start speeding up again meaningful quality it, in the nfl it, to me time. it's huge yeah. exactly right it's one of those things we overlook as evaluators sometimes and you go all right but if that guy's like tuckling the ball in yeah. it's not going to be the same in the nfl he's going to get tackled right there and you want to know why debo samuel's always running down the middle of the defense is because right. he he can do that without ever breaking stride all great stuff thank you you, you mentioned the one yeah. negative it's a big negative it's a, it's a giant question mark torn acl yep. in the national title game in january wasn't that long ago if you use a top 10 pick on somebody you want him to play in september so teams like the Jets, they pick at 4 and 10. They'd love to have the best receiver in the class. What do they do with this evaluation as it pertains to their <laughs> early picks? He'd be a guy at 10 where, you know, again, you'd have to read the, the room the right way and the draft the right way, where maybe if you're the Jets, you're thinking about trading down a little bit. Maybe mm -hmm. you think he's a guy that I would say, I'd be willing to draft him a few spots higher and so what? We don't have them for the first four weeks Especially of the year. Especially if you have a pick at four. That, that, that to me, you know. And again, they have some, they got Corey Davis. They got Elijah Moore. Yeah. They got a lot of other picks left in the draft. But Where they you gonna clearly get, want a wide receiver they need based a, off they how they've behaved game the last couple months. Yeah, yes. they need a game breaker. Right. They were just, we know they gave Tyree Kill and the Kansas City Chiefs basically the same offer the Dolphins did. Mm -hmm. He'll just pick the Dolphins. He wanted to live in Miami. He's from there. Yeah. So, but yes, this would be the type of guy that I'd go, oh, this makes sense. You want a Matt LaFleur, Mike LaFleur run game. You got the other receivers that kind of do everything. Now we need the guy that scares the shit out of everybody. Yeah. And that, to me, is this, is this guy. Right. And so what? ACL, you and I both know, 2022, it's not nearly as dangerous as right. the injury as it used to be. Right. You know, most guys can be close to 100% after eight, nine months. Like, close to 100%. 10, 11 months, you go, oh, damn, he's, it's Odell Beckham Jr. in the playoffs. You go, he's hitting on all cylinders again. Right. And it was just barely a year. Right. So uh, he'd be a guy, I guess what I'm saying is I, I would maybe draft a little higher yeah. with the injury there. And I know he said, I've said this a couple of times, that we want to get to, like, assigning kids with where they might fit the best later on sometime in April. But the ACL injury is such a part of his evaluation, and it's such a part of wondering, okay, what's going to happen with him? Yeah. Do you think he gets out of the top ten? You don't yeah. have to pick a team. No, I think he won't. I don't think he'll go top ten. Won't go 10. top ten. I don't think okay. he will. top 15? <sighs> I, I think it's right in that range. Okay. I, I feel like a 15 to 20 – it's probably where I want to say with all the circumstances surrounding this here. Yeah. I will say, no ACL. To me, this kid is a top 10 pick. Mm. Uh, if Devontae Smith was last year, Jamar Chase, that to me, this guy is right there in that class of player. No question. Better than Henry Ruggs coming out. Yeah. Not even close. Better than Jerry Judy coming out. Where what was Rugs the twelfth pick, eleventh pick? Rugs was I mean Judy was like fourteen or fifteen to me. So 12 yeah, twelfth or Rugs. Yeah. yeah, to me there's a significance. Like I said, he's Jerry Judy route running. Yeah. with a sixth gear that Jerry Judy didn't have. Better than Smith and Waddle. <sighs> he's like very much like a Devonte Smith. That that's really what he to me is body it's that is sure. it's that body type. And he and he, again I think he's ten pounds heavier than Devonte yeah. Smith, but. Yes, the way he runs routes, the way he gets off the ball, to me is very similar to Devontae Smith. Plays tough. I mean, really is. He's fearless. And like I said, the one thing I liked a little bit maybe more than Devontae Smith was his ability to absorb contact with the ball in his hand. And even when he was running routes, and maybe not quite be as affected as Devontae Smith was. Yes, no ACL, top 10 pick for me for sure. How many Rockets pre-ACL? Yeah, it's, it's three and a half. It's, it's up there. The leader. I mean... In the leader house. Some of the p the catches and the turn it on, and you go, uh, he's going to get pushed out at the 20. And you go, what? He turned the f corner and yeah. scored? I mean, there's like six or seven of those where you just go, no way did he turn the corner against that team. 
where I know they got four four guys in the DBs. So that that's to me where he went above and beyond. Are we ready for the Buckeye portion? Yeah, let's do it. I mean, again, okay. I just want to make sure Buckeye fans, I know you hate me, but uh, <laughs> don't forget, I hate Jim Harbaugh a lot, so that should win over. <laughs> I hate, I can't root for Michigan ever as long as Jim Harbaugh's there. And I, I like did, these guys. I didn't know that. I, oh, I can't stand Jim Harbaugh. Okay. Yeah, yeah I root against him in every phase of life. Okay. Yes. It's good to know. Yeah. He's an asshole. I appreciate a grudge being <laughs> No held. problem. Good it's quality It's going to be grudge. hell. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Garrett Wilson. Yeah. To many people, the number one. I know. The fact that you don't have a number one is like, okay, but not even in the top five. People have their hands <laughs> raised everywhere. So Garrett Wilson not in the top five because? I think it's a little overrated in my opinion. You know, again, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to preface this as nice, you know, not, not trying to be mean or not mean or whatever. He's real good. He is. But – I don't think – yeah, yeah, I know. Pete's going, but Jamison Williams couldn't beat him out at Ohio State. I know. Well, Joe Burrow also couldn't beat out Dwayne Haskins there either. So maybe we Good. need to question them a Good little point. bit. Yeah. So, um, but but I, everything to me is a little bit overhyped or overdone. Yes, he's fast. Is it 4-3-8 at the Combine Fest? It doesn't translate like that to me. No, it does not. You know, The route running is good. I don't sit here and go, it's great, it's good. You know, ability to make things happen after the catch, I think is overrated. Yeah, when the Red Sea parts, he was good. But, like, did he do some of the things, like, I want to tell you, like, Watson or, or um, Jamison Williams did, where they, they catch a pass, break a tackle, stiff arm somebody, then break an ankle, and then pull away? Absolutely not. In fact, with, with Wilson, almost every time, I, as soon as an arm gets on him, I go, he's going down. That's, that's it. You know, there's a few plays here and there. You know, so I guess between the route running a hair underwhelmed, the speed I don't th I don't think is as explosive as the forty time on film, and then the play strength to me was a little less than I was expecting to. And again, he he's adjusted the ball well. You see some evidence of him being able to catch some back shoulder balls and all that. But I also can tell you I see evidence of you know people getting their hands on him in the routes, and I go eh. Yeah, it affected him running the route. Mm. Or, you know, like I said, ball in his hand, taking a shot. No, he's going down. That's where it was a little different. I thought too many of the big plays that everyone's going to go, oh, look at this highlight play. I want to go. It's like the perfect scenario, let alone Ohio State outclasses the Big Ten more than Alabama outclasses mm. the SEC. Just like athletically, speed-wise. After, we, yes, get to, yes. after <laughs> we get out of Penn State and Michigan, like yeah. what DBs do we think can really run? Outside of Iowa City? I don't know. I, <laughs> I mean, that, but that, that to me is the other thing I would say, too. And yeah. again, where I go, and you, then you turn on the Penn State game or you turn right. on the Michigan game or you turn on the Nebraska game that's got two NFL DBs on there, and I go, you don't see a lot of separating or yards after the catch or all these highlight plays we want to talk about in all these other games yeah. when we're playing like, yeah, the team that's like I talked to you a little earlier about. You know, Ohio State so outclasses the Big Ten more weeks than not, too. They're different than Bama and the fact that Ohio State will start gashing you with the run game and they'll dominate you with the run game. And all of a sudden it becomes, oh, shit, you know, they're overpowering us up front. We can't do that. Now we have to play this crazy coverage against these receivers yeah. and do that. And it becomes like, oh, my gosh, I can't even believe they're playing this. Yeah. And it's just easy pitch and catch. It's one of the things I think I questioned about Justin Fields, which is so many of the looks you get are just so oh, my gosh, elementary, even an average receiver or somebody's going to get open against these looks. And, again, I'm not trying to say they're average. I'm just saying, to me, it's a hair totally overhyped yeah. or overlooked So, like, here. Just, for, just for the purpose of conversation here, when we were talking about the North, North, uh, North Dakota State wide receiver, yeah. Watson, okay, right, right. and you, you say, okay, I know he's better than everybody else out there, but I can picture it. I can picture him on an SEC field or in the NFL eating up – ground the way he is even though Ohio State has an advantage athletically uh, and they run the ball well great that you point that out yeah can you even with that picture what it would look like in the NFL as as like okay yeah he's he's that much or his team is that much better than everybody else that's why he's that open but I think he can get open in the NFL too does I, that make I, sense I, you know what I'm saying yes I do think he can get open in the NFL I do I just think like I hear like people trying to say Odell Beckham Jr. And I would go, there's nothing on film that says Odell Beckham Jr. Just because he got a reverse yeah. against Michigan State 
and nobody was in his way and he got to run straight for a touchdown does not mean he's Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah. You know, that's that's where people to me lose sight of things a little bit. The context of how you got that 50-yard touchdown. You know, what what did you do to get there? And like we always talk about, not all 6'3", 250-pound people are created equal. Right. Some people, are they, they, they're not all the same. Not all guys or 50-yard touchdown passes are created equal. There's some differences and some nuances to where I value what I saw from Watson or a Williams more than I did from Garrett Wilson. And I certainly don't want that to be, you know, I, I, I'm, I, again, I'm not trying. This guy, I understand he's the first round, and he's certainly in the first round mm -hmm. conversation for me. To me, though, I just feel like he's a little, a little yeah. overrated. I think what I hear, and having done this with you for the last, you know, three, is it three seasons? Yeah. You've done this. It's yeah. been a while. You're not saying he can't be successful in the right. NFL, right? And that a first round pick could be wasted on him. You just see five that you like more. That, that, to me, yes. And yeah. you know, and you compare him to like, let's compare him to Jamison Williams, who we just talked yeah. about. Jamison Williams is taller mm -hmm. and four pounds. Uh, lighter but like play strength is better I mean the ability to run by DBs route running it's it's it to me it's it's not even close I mean one of the things I wrote down here at the end is just I I thought it's average size it's average play strength and you know the speed is good but I wrote it's not special and I mm. wrote the route running is good but to me not special not to where I looked at it that way and that I think that would be my bottom line there you know I don't think you're gonna he's a guy that you're gonna expect to run over the middle and like you know catch some of those balls like we talked about you know it, physicality is not his game there's not a lot of it there mm. and like I said when he does catch it over the middle it's kind of just go down mm. that's what it is there and again there's nothing wrong with that I'm just saying the other guys do a little different stuff uh, I mean, if, if the ball eats you up on the on the fastball coming to you over the middle that that there is something wrong with that Chris Olave yeah I, I know Wilson's the the, the major one people are look at and see but Olave also not in the top five I like Olave more than Wilson so just it, so you know I was gonna ask if, yes. if one was in Olave yeah. would be in Olave would have been in what for makes me. him what makes him a better NFL prospect I think here? Olave plays with better strength Olave's an elite route runner like elite like I I am I know what Olave is gonna be Olave is gonna be an elite slot receiver that can beat you deep, you know, from time to time. Again, I think his speed's a little overrated, too. Mm. I will say he doesn't play to 4.38 to me. And again, what I would tell the people is go to some of the games with higher end talent and you don't see them blowing by people quite the same way. Or, you know, like I said, defenses aren't compromised or where they have to, oh my gosh, we have to, oh, we have to overdo it to stop this so much that it makes it so easy for that. I get it. You know, I get it. But that to me is, you know, again, what I'll look at. It just, again, it didn't pop off the screen where I just went, oh, man, he's just running by people yeah. all the time. But, you know, again, I think he has a little bit more of an ability than Wilson to make people miss in space. Right. I thought really his ability to break tackles and play through. Con I'm running a 10 yard in cut. And I got a guy pushing on me and leaning on me. He wasn't affected during his route running and then still can make the break and make the catch. That to me is where I found Olavi to be really smooth. I mean, he's an incredibly smooth athlete. A just to the ball deep down the field is phenomenal. It's off the charts that way. Yeah, he's not real big. It's six foot, and he looks smaller than that on the football field. But to me, he has a chance to be like an elite slot in the NFL for a long time. And that's a that's an awfully good position to be in with, with how often teams are out there with that personnel. Our friends at Points Bet give us a pretty good chance here to uh, to put a bow on this talk about the top five wide receivers. Yeah. So first round wide receiver drafted odds: Garrett yeah. Wilson, number one, plus one ten. Drake London, who you had at five, is the second at plus 150. Jamison Williams, your number one. This is all based off of the ACL injury that he had in January. Right. Third at plus 450. Yeah. Well, that, that says something right there that, you know, people are putting it on Jamison Williams even with the tear at Torre right. ACL. Uh, again, you know, everyone knows who, who I like, certainly. I feel like, listen, you want to bet on consensus or – what I hear everybody saying and all of that, I mean, the safest bet seems to be Garrett Wilson. That that seems to be the safest bet. Yeah. You know, again, this doesn't agree with my rankings. Right. And I don't necessarily look at that and go, oh, he's definitely going to translate to the NFL quite the way I look at some of those other guys. But I think if we're just talking about purely betting money-wise, what I hear from people in the league, what you hear in the media, all of that, yeah, Wilson seems to be – the most slam dunk name right. you hear there, for right. sure. Right. Well, I, I I think I would have put Jamison Williams ahead of Drake London, uh, but Drake certainly um, 
was really good when he was healthy yeah. at USC last year. And I'm guessing the injury super well known, that, like you're saying, also too. with the injury. Yeah. And he'll have his own pro day early yeah. April. Yeah. I know we have uh, one more thing here with uh, points bet. Oh, I forgot about Our that. Our friends I got there my points big, bet. My big points bet read here. I, I, this is the second show in a row. I forgot this. And sorry, points bet. <laughs> How dare I? You have the right to slap me like Will Smith <laughs> open, slapped Chris Rock last night. Hand. Okay, points yeah. bet. You're allowed to do that. If you're in an eligible state, points bet has an exclusive sign-up offer for unbuttoned listeners that you can't miss. All right? Unbutton listeners, you can't miss this. Download the PointsBet app. Use code NBC2K. That's code NBC2K to sign up and get two risk-free bets up to $2,000. So you get that $2,000 risk-free bets. And if you bet 100 and lose, you will get free bets worth $100. So, like, they're paying you back. And you're going to get free bets up to $2,000. Sounds kind of good, and the app is really easy to use. Once the game starts, don't just bet. No, I, I can't read today, Paul. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life yes. with points bet. Sorry, points bet. Kid can't even read today. I think you did that pretty well. If that's, if that's the worst you'll ever Thanks. do. That's, okay. That's Thanks. good. Thanks. Thanks that's a lot. That's very good. Thanks there. I've had much worse. You've had worse? My kids were uh, – one of my sons heard this, and he's like, Dad, like, so they give you $2,000? And, like, you actually get that? No, no, they <laughs> no, don't. I'm like, don't. actually, they do. They yeah. do. They're yeah. not going to give you 2000 in cash and be like, here you go. Now <laughs> right. bet well, – no, but, right. yes, in one way or another, you're getting a free $2,000 there. It's pretty right. damn good. Sounds like a pretty good deal. Yeah. yeah. There's a show, that's a show. There's a show, that's a show, all right? So we'll see. We'll see how this wide receiver class plays out. You guys heard it here first. You know, we'll see. You know, again, it's a very talented group. There's some guys that we didn't even get to talk about that I really excite me too, like some Chris Sims specials where I want to go, ooh, I love this guy. I know he's not. Yeah, I know. And I think we're going to hit some of it on Wednesday too. We're going to react. And this this position group is so deep. Yeah, we are on Wednesday going to hit more of these guys on this list, more of the guys down the line that intrigue me and I think could have a future in the NFL and be something special that way. Please send in the questions. I know me not having the Ohio State guys is going to cause some issues, but hopefully everybody can also recognize that some of these guys I did put on the list, they deserve some credit. There's some real talent here, and I'd be shocked if they're not in the first-round conversation, and that's what I mean by Christian Watson or Alec Pierce from Cincinnati. Paulie, you're you're the man. man. Peace well out. Nice hoodie fun. today. Yeah. All right. Good. Thanks for not slapping the shit out of me. Peace <laughs> out. That's a show. Peace. Wingspan. See you Wednesday. <laughs> not enough wingspan to, re- to reach over there. I can get that, though. Yo, yo, what's up? Come on, man. Subscribe on YouTube to Chris Sims Unbutton Podcast. I need you. Please hit the subscribe button, please. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.